So, what is the deal with shooting RAW? A lot of people seem to have the notion that RAW images are just too much trouble, too much work, because all the images require edit before they can be used. Edit's a pretty spooky word to some people. I think they've just never seen RAW, and they don't understand the difference that it offers and the advantage that it offers. RAW is a huge advantage, and I hope to show a little of that here. This program is Adobe Bridge. It's sort of the file manager that comes along with Photoshop. This is Photoshop CS5. These are folders on your disk, and these folders are created when you download your camera images from the memory card. It creates these folders. When you select a folder, it shows the images in that folder, and when you select an image, it shows EXIF data. I'm going to select them all with the keyboard here. Control A selects them all and right click and open in camera raw. It'll get us started. And this is camera raw. This is the camera raw module. It's the same Adobe camera raw module in Photoshop, in Lightroom, and in Elements. Same module. The Lightroom rearranges it differently, but it's the same tools and it does the same thing. Lightroom is becoming almost inexpensive now, so it's it's popular. Elements leaves out a lot of this, frankly, but it does, I think, include this first basic tab, and it includes the, these basic tools. You know, it'll do that. We have to select white balance. The camera didn't do it. Raw images are raw images, and they don't have white balance in them. And so I'm going to say select all, and I'm going to come over here. These were flash. So I've selected white balance on all of them in that one click. There's a lot more than we can do, but this is the least that you have to do is to select white balance, and then you have to save those images as JPEG. That part of it is right, so other applications can see it. There's other ways to save all your images. Select all. I'm going to save here. I usually work out of Photoshop. It has batches that does this, and you can resample to specific sizes and do other things, but save images. I can select TIFF if I want to output TIFF if instead, JPEG. These four fields are concatenated to make the file name. And there's drop downs here. You can serial number. So I can type something different here and I can come over here and unput serial number and, and change the file name. And the output, I can save in this same location or I can put them in some other location, which you had to specify. And then you click Save and you output all your images to JPEG and you'd have the same thing that you had out of the camera if you'd shot JPEG and flash white balance and if that's all you want if that's all you care about <laughs> well then do that but I'm gonna cancel but what you need to realize is there's so much more you can do before you output those JPEGs and it's so much better and it's so easy I just don't understand the, the objection to it so we said flash, and here's a white card. It's RGB numbers right here are the numbers of the pixel under the cursor, and it says that green is a little low. We can see up there on the histogram that peak at the right end is this large white card. Can we see green's a little low? The complement of green is magenta, so it's a little high. This does have kind of a pink cast to it. We've got other things we can do. We can say auto, and we can look at that. Well, that's not much better. <laughs> we have a white card. I put in the first one here, and, and then I took it out, you know, and then you shoot your session. But this flash session, it was all the same lighting in all of them. They're all equal in that regard. So what I do to one can be done to all. I have a white balance tool, and I select it. And I simply click on that white card. Click. Did you see that white spike line up here? And the RGB colors now 2222222222. That's equal. That's the meaning of white balance. Balance means equal. White has the special property of equal RGB color and also gray. Gray and white are, are neutral when they have equal RGB components. And clicking this card 
it says computer I know this spot is white and neutral make it be neutral and so the computer removes any cast there to make it be equal and applies that over the whole image and we have no color cast and that's as good as it can get this is a Porta Brace white balance card it's five dollars from B&H and it's plastic and it's durable and it's washable and it's handy it's about five to seven inches you can put it in your camera bag and it's accurate it's neutral color now you can spend a whole lot more than five dollars for lots of other ways to do this same thing and this is all you need this does it there's other white things you can click on in some images a lot of images have something white in them so if I click on this white spot right here click say I didn't have the white card in here and I click on that now I can judge the color that's not quite equal reds this is kind of the opposite reds a little low greens a little high but it's not far off it's pretty good color it's not bad and again the purpose of this is when you click that spot it says make this spot be neutral for example here's a pink cheek and if I click on that pink cheek click now you see the colors up there are 126 127 that's equal it made that spot be neutral gray it removed pink to do that and it removed pink from the rest of the image which makes it blue now <laughs> that's not a good spot to click on but that's how it works this spot should be white so when I click on that that's what we get and you can do that before you output your JPEGs that's better now in this case I left a lot of space around these the subject tends to move around and also cropping we can crop here uh, when you crop I usually say 5 by 7 but just to show you that's 4 by 6 it's tall and thin and here's 8 by 10 it's shorter and wider they're different so you need some room around them to be able to select one or the other you know without knowing what you're going to do I like to say 5 by 7 because it's kind of a compromise in between those two more extreme shapes I guess you'd say so I'm going to crop that like that I cropped them all because I had all selected so now they're all cropped move that over just a little bit and so now when we look at them what I'll do is I'll output these on a USB memory card these JPEGs and I'll take those to the large HD TV and we'll look at them there and pick out a couple but what the TV says now that I've cropped them is that is what the TV will see well that's better and you can do that before you output your images that's a little hot right there the spots a little bright RGB colors 241 240 240 239 I have the notion that the highlights on the skin should never be brighter than 240 if even that uh, they'll print better on paper if they're not quite so bright so I'm gonna say select all and I'm gonna say exposure and I'll drop it down say a third of a stop and I did all of them in, in one swoop there and so now this is what we got it says 239 229 that's that's better I think that'll print better on paper that's easy and you can do that you can't do that in the camera it's trivial here it's so easy so now we've adjusted white balance precisely we've adjusted exposure precisely in my mind we've cropped them although we have to come back and look at them so we'll throw that JPEG away we don't want the one with the card in it this is the first time you've seen your images you just downloaded them this is the first pass through this is the first time you've seen any of them. you have to look at all your images that's what we're doing and when you see something that needs to be a little different you just do it this will step through them too here and here and when you you just make it a little different if you want to and now if you did want to crop them different we've only got one selected now we're not doing all of them we're just doing this one so if you did want one just a little different you do it go to the next one this is just a touch this is nothing it's the act of looking at them all going through them all that takes the time and this adds just a few seconds it's no big deal it's easy it's trivial so you go through them you fix them like you want them and then you go output all of them 
and then you have this. Done all of our images. You know, we got more here now. This one we should have aligned better. But now your images look like that. We've got a stray hair here. It's going to need a little touch up later after we pick two. Then we'll work on those two. So that's the idea. That's basically the idea of RAW is you see all your images, you do what you see they need, and you do what you want, and you don't have to accept what came out of the camera. Camera's kind of a crude tool in a lot of ways. I'm going to say done. and We'll see our changes being applied. Here's our changes coming down, and over here too is updating those little guys with the changes that we made. The raw file is never changed. We keep the original raw file straight out of the camera forever. I don't think it's possible to change it. There's no tools to change a raw file. What is saved here when we edit it is the list of the changes that we made. We saved the, the list of those changes in a little separate side file. It's a file, same name, .xmp. And you don't have to have that file. There's other ways not to have it. It's only 8 kilobytes. That's what's updated when you change things. It's real fast. And it's lossless editing. That means when we come back and look at these again, or output them to JPEG again, or any way we access them again, it will apply those changes from that list to that raw file, and we'll see the result. We'll see what we thought we had <laughs> instead of the original raw file. That's just how it works. I'm going too slow. Let's, here's some more. I'm going to say Control A to select them all. Right click, open all in Camera Raw. Now these are varied images. Can't do the same thing to all of them. So these will require individual attention. And this one, for example, maybe I could do the first four. I'll select the first four here with Shift and click both ends. But we have to do something about white balance. So, I don't know, daylight. This is tungsten lights coming up from the ground making orange. <laughs> We're way out in the 200 miles out from the big city, but there's still lights everywhere, and we're getting a lot of orange light. Tungsten, I don't know, maybe that's better. It's blue, though. We have an auto white balance. Maybe that's better. But we have another tool I wanted to show you. You see here that the corners are dark. That's vignetting. And the reason I showed you this image is because it's a 14 to 24 millimeter zoom. It's at 15 millimeter, which is very wide. It's at f2.8, which is very wide. 20 seconds at ISO 3200. But wide lenses just do this. They vignette the corners, make the corners dark. They can't cover the whole frame evenly. And they also cause distortion, barrel distortion, pincushion distortion. If this were a picture of buildings where we'd have some straight lines, we may see those lines were curved. This is a pretty good wide angle lens, but that's just what they do. We have another tool I wanted to show you. Lens profile corrections. And the editing that I'm going to do on these four images is I'm going to click that box and watch the corners in the picture click. No dark corners. It fixed that. It also fixed the distortion. It stretched this image in the way opposite the distortion that it expected. It knows we use this lens from the EXIF data. And it has a database of, I don't know, pretty much all lenses. This is a Nikon RAW file, so it's showing us Nikon images, I guess. But it has a profile of all those lenses. And it knows we use that lens. It knows 15 millimeter. It knows f2.8. It knows what's going to happen. And it knows how to fix it. And it did. That's good stuff. Real good stuff. It has sliders here. You can vary the degree of what it did, more or less distortion and vignetting. It has a tool, chromatic aberration. That's a lens thing, too. Sometimes they cause purple fringing around the edges of colors and this can remove that by clicking this. I can't say that bothers me much. I don't see a lot of that. 
kind of needs to be a big 100% view to really see that. And speaking of 100%, this is the Milky Way in the winter. This is November, looking north. And right there, right above the cursor, the first white dot is a star like the others. But the one above it is a bigger fuzzy something. <laughs> that is the Andromeda Galaxy. If we come in here at 100%, and I select the hand tool, we don't have scroll bars here, so I have to drag it. And if I do that skillfully, there's the Andromeda Galaxy. Now, this is a crummy picture. <laughs> it's my first try. But anyway, I thought that was interesting. So much for that. Let's come back here to the Basics tab. And I can change the exposure of this. I didn't know 20 seconds. That's just a wild guess. You can't go much longer than that because the sky rotates and blurs things. And you can't really go longer than that, even at 14 millimeter, without a motor drive. I'm going to change this a little. So we can make it look like we want it to look. I don't know, maybe there, and I'm going to bring the blacks up just a little bit, maybe there. So you make it look like you want to. The point is, you can see it. You've got great tools. They're easy. They're convenient. They're fast. You're looking at it. You just do what you want to do. This picture here is just a outside picture. We have to do white balance, daylight. Yeah, I don't know. Cloudy, it is a little. Okay, that's better. In this case, that's better. It kind of snaps it in. You know when you get white balance about right, as a rule. We also have auto white balance if you want to. Auto. And we've got tools. I didn't mention them, but we've got auto tones here. You can click on auto, kind of like in the camera. Auto. Now here it brought the brightness up quite a bit. Brought the contrast contrast thing, but it brought the brightness way up. You can click on these sliders and they'll go to the default value. Double click. That's the default. Double click. That's the default. So that's where it was. And auto does that. That's too much. It's clipping here. And you can see that clipping here. I turn that on by clicking it. Those red pixels are the pixels that are being clipped. And I can judge what they are and I can pull this back a little bit or whatever. You can do what you want to. I'm going to go back to default. Maybe it should be a little, a little more. And as far as white balance, let's make this a little bigger so I can see it. And I'll turn that off. I'll know, I'll know to avoid those spots now though because they're clipped. But I can clip on white things here, and I can do the tones that way. This is the white balance I got by clipping on that white, or I can click on that white. Maybe that's good, I don't know, or here. And again, here is auto, and here is cloudy. So you decide what you want. And if you can't be bothered to do that, well, shoot JPEG in the camera, I guess. This one here, uh, this special just for this, because it's all white, it's a large white scene. This is overhead room light, the normal ceiling room light, incandescent light bulb up there. You can see the shadow here under the cup handle, and we have to select white balance. So I'll select tungsten, and that's what the camera would have done if it had shot incandescent. Adobe uses the word tungsten and historically film, uh, like color slide film, used to use tungsten. They had a tungsten type for shooting indoors. Anyway, the camera uses incandescent and they're exactly the same word, no difference. So that's what the camera would have done in incandescent. But we have a white balance tool and if I click on the white card, it does that. That's better. See how wide those are? I mean, that's not equal. That's not balanced. Uh, we just know it's not. But I can click on the white card. Click. See what that did? Now we have other white things in the picture. A lot of pictures do. They may have a white church steeple or a white tablecloth or a white sign that says pizza or an envelope laying on the table or something. 
and all white things are not the same. Some white things are very off color and they're unacceptable and you get bad results. Other white things though, they were trying to make those things look white and they're pretty close sometimes. I'd say half of the time and something in the images is going to work and I'm going to click on the cup. Click. And so that's what we get on the cup. You can see the RGB numbers on the card. We know the card's neutral and those are the numbers we get. Blue is a little high. You can see blue's a little high. But, you know, that's close. It, it's not bad color. Here's white paper used as background just from the craft store, you know, paper. That's what I get clicking on the paper. That's what I get clicking on the card. That's what I get clicking on the cup. This is what I get if I say auto. That's pretty bad. It's not as bad as if I click tungsten, which it actually was. Do you see the point? You you see your images and you do what you see they need and it's easy and okay, it'll take you a few minutes. This is nothing compared to the trouble you went to to take them. This is so easy. There's other things we can do. I have a straighten tool. Click. The camera was not level. Sometimes I do that. So I just mark a line with a straighten tool that I want to be level and it makes it be level. It could have been a vertical line. Sometimes the camera angle will fool you a little bit. This is the view the crop tool is showing me. If I click any other tool, this is what our image looks like. Now the real point of this image being included is that it is underexposed. It's largely all white. There's lots of white in this image. And we just knew at a glance when we walked up with our camera that this was going to be underexposed. We needed to apply about plus one stop compensation at the camera to offset that. It's just what light meters do. Light meters try to make things pretty much in the middle here. Let me balance that so it looks better. Light meters just try to put things more or less in the middle. And this is a brighter image that ought to be brighter. And I needed that compensation and I didn't do it. But this is raw. And I can just come up here and say plus one stop. And that's what we got now. This is very much like adding ISO in the camera would have done. They both move the data further to the right, make it brighter. They both have the risk of bringing up noise from the bottom as they go. And so it can get noisy. But this is raw. It's 12 bits. One stop is no big deal. Two stops, eh, maybe you could argue that the risk is higher bringing in noise. But if your image needs two stops, <laughs> it's going to be better than if you didn't give it two stops. So anyway, I think that's a little bright. I'm going to back it off just a, just a tad. So you do what you want to. We've got other tools. I'm going too slow and taking too long. But spot removal will remove facial blemishes, for example. Any spots that covers over them. Red eye will remove red eye. Compact cameras have a lot of red eye, and you can process your compact camera images in this raw tool. It knows how to do that, and it's also lossless editing then. It's not making more JPEG artifacts. It does not change the original JPEG image. It keeps that as is, and it stores in that JPEG file somewhere else the list of the changes that we're making, like cropping and red eye and exposure and whatever we do. And so then when we come back and access that file with this program, it will apply that list of changes to that original JPEG image again and we'll see what we thought we had. That means other programs looking at that file, they don't know how to handle that. They don't know what that is and they will just show you the original JPEG image again because that's all they know. So we have to output another JPEG here for those other programs to use. Just like RAW does output a JPEG image for other programs to use. But it is lossless editing. We only have two sets of JPEG artifacts. The first one that the camera created and this last one we did when we, after we've done our changes, we only have two sets of JPEG artifacts instead of four or six sets of JPEG artifacts. It's lossless editing. That's good stuff. 
adjustment brush. It's, it gets complicated. Click that, and not complicated is not the word. It's versatile. It can do all these things, and it can do it in areas, and you can select those areas, and that's where you do these things. Anyway, it's pretty powerful. We won't go into that. Let's, let's say that we're done. And I uh, hope that that helps some. And here's the plan and changes that we made. That's Camera Raw. It's really good stuff because you can see what you're doing. You know what you're doing and you can get what you want. It will change your life, I promise you. <laughs> your photographic light. It's powerful stuff. Well, I hope that was of interest. Not too long and I hope it helped. Thanks for listening.